Okay, in this how-to video, I'll be demonstrating how to rig up a weapons model intended to be exported out in into uh, the video game Urban Terror. And to begin with, there's really nothing really unique or any skill requirements beyond the understanding of of how to rig up uh, any given object for the purpose of control. There are some specialized tags uh, that are required to make it function within the game based on the code itself. But the actual means of being able to control this object as a as a animated uh, model within uh, Urban Terror is not that difficult, or is it anything above and beyond what uh, is required uh, just to make it function, period, within the application. The only requirement, of course, is that whatever skeletal rig or control system that you use, that whatever animation is applied to it is applied to that model only based on its on its rigging design. So we can certainly add as many types of means of control that we want, and then when we animate it, all we need is the animation to match the rigging and and your gold. So since this is a, a video showing uh, rigging, uh, let's get started by uh, looking at uh, the one a single element here that is a requirement as part of the uh, as part of the uh, rigging solution, and that I've created a simple bone in the scene here, and I called it tag master. Now ta tags are pretty important. It's how it, it relates to to how uh, the weapon will function directly within uh, Urban Terror, and that will become obvious as we uh, move forward. But in this case here, what we need is a, a single tag that allows us to connect this weapon directly to the uh, player model within the game, be it uh, in their hand or as a sidearm on their side based on, on, on weapon selection. So in this case, we need this to be correspond to weapon tag. So now we have our starting point here. And we obviously want to move this into a position where the gun is going to be uh, relative to the same position within the game. Uh, and for, uh, just for the purpose of the, vid uh, of the video tutorial, um, I'll just uh, I'll just put it into where I, s I would assume would be close enough because we can always adjust this accordingly. Uh, uh, you know, t you know, nudge it in different directions until we get the right the right match between our weapons here as a separate object versus the player model within the game. Okay, so we have our weapons tag. Now we need another tag a couple of more other uh, other tag elements uh, <coughs> right off the bat based on the functionality of this weapon. So uh, another element that we need is to be able to uh, have a means to have our flash uh, 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 our weapons flash uh, connect to where exactly where the front of the barrel is and of course you have various different lengths of barrels so we need to be a little bit more precise of where it's located so we've got uh, a tag and it's called FLASH simple enough now anytime the weapon fires this is where the flash is going to originate but there is also another element of the game that has to be connected to this to this node point in in the form of the silencer so if this weapon has a silencer it uses currently uses the same tag called flash now we're thinking about adding a, another tag to this to make it things a little bit more adjustable uh, directly relating to the si to the silencer now Another element that, uh, that is a part of the uh, overall construction of, of, our, of our rigging here is the need to be able to put in a laser. So we're going to put another tag here just below where we're going to think where the laser is going to be. And of course we're going to call that tag laser. So now we have some of the basic components necessary to make this 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 functional as a, as as a weapon based on, on individual elements such as the uh, as such as lasers, the flash, as well as the inclusion of the silencer, plus a means to attach our model to whatever model that is 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 uh, this needs player model this needs to be associated with. But we need one more uh, tag, which is somewhat of an offset off the center from the rest of the tags. And we're going to rotate this around, and we're going to rotate it up a bit at, a, at an interesting angle. And then we've got to move and offset it from the weapon. Now, this tag here, whoops, let's go back to our, whoops, ah, let's go back to our front view. Okay, there we go. Now, this tag is a special tag, too, as well. It's called Tag Eject. CT, done. 
Okay, so now we have a way for the for the software to understand where the direction of where the empty shell has to be ejected from the weapon. Now this could be uh, in some of the weapons that we have already in 4.1. This eject would be on the opposite side, creating a left-handed eject, which was put in morally for the sole purpose of being able to demonstrate uh, ooh, to kind of show off uh, the action of the uh, weapon itself more than it was about creating a, a realistic impression of the weapon within the game. <clears throat> now, another consideration here now at this point, what we might as well do is we simply use our link tool. Uh, we'll deselect our, our weapons tool here so we can let, link that to our our uh, tag weapon which becomes our root node of the entire model so if we grab that there then these should move around with that with the model now <laughs> another thing that we want to look at here is because of the apparent child created hierarchy there's automatically a scripted uh, procedure that is that is applied to the bones upon creation and how it's attached to the rigging so if you do it raw Based out of the box, uh, anytime you move in one of these objects, uh, bones within the scene here, you're generally going to get a connection between the two, and it's going to want to rotate it. Now, just uh, I've already set this up to work the way it needs to, but just to kind of show you, within 3ds Max, uh, a setting that you need to make things a little bit more easy to manipulate is under the bone tools is a property called bones on and off. What this basically does is turn on and off the scripting of, of how these uh, bones are interconnected between one another. So if we put on bone on, then we grab the bone here. Oops, come on. And oops. Okay, we grab the bone here. Okay, we grab that bone there. Let's let's see if we can create it. If this if this doesn't work the way I anticipated it would work, we're just going to move on. So you can see as I move this bone back and forth, the, all the other bones are connected to this as part of that uh, scripted hierarchy. Now this is going to make uh, adjustments difficult and well, basically near impossible, or hand keying is not going to be possible based on this type of connection. So we have to turn bone properties off to make sure that we turn off that scripted feature. <clears throat> Well, as far as the requirements of the game engine goes, that's it. How we connect this uh, to this to this model is simple enough. We just simply take the model and do 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 do. Okay, I'm gonna delete this off. I don't know how that got left on. Probably because I was playing around, testing things out. So we're gonna place a skin modifier onto this onto our stack here. We're gonna do edit. Whoops, not you. We're gonna do add. And where are we? We're gonna add our three tags that we created to our selection here and now when I grab this this bone here we can see that indeed our model is moving along with our root node however if we also if we were to select say a silencer we move that around you can see obviously there's just some crushing going on so from a setup point <coughs> point of view this is not really set up ideally for 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 automatically uh, you know exporting from this point here. So what we need to do is to actually edit the envelopes, set up the vertices, select all the vertices, and then from the, this junction here, we can then select our tag weapon and give it a a, a absolute effect of 100%. Now with that set up, we can now take objects like the flash and the eject and move those around and adjust accordingly through trial and error. <clears throat> this of course is now set up for more or less uh, let's say the, the current configuration of the third per or the third person weapon models in within the game which ha have absolutely no animation attached to it and they're just static models that are attached to the third person player model. This is going to be. This will be changed in the future, because the nature of the MV5 system that we're building is cyclic, meaning that we start at the player model, we move through the weapons, and then the weapons move move through the first person perspective into the third person perspective. So whatever, at, at any point, the current, let's say, orientation of the first person model will <coughs> uh, will represent the current. Uh, 
uh, first person perspective. So if they're reloading a weapon, then the third person model is going to be reloading a weapon. If they're firing a weapon, then the third person model is going to be firing a weapon as in uh, in a sort of, let's say, parody of the, of the first person perspective. Okay, now, so what we need now is to actually rig or skin this up in such a way that we can actually add uh, animated uh, uh, or add uh, keyframe animation to our model here. So we need a few more, obviously need a few more con means of being able to control this, this model rather than, um, than just sending it out as a static. So at this juncture here, we don't even have to be too overly concerned about the naming of our tags because they're no longer tags, they're control points. So we can call this one here, for example, uh, slide. Oops. Slide. Okay, so this slide so we would interpret the slide to be anything connected to this, this this action here. Now, of course, we need to assign this to a root node, which is our wep our root weapons root node. So now, if we grab this here, this should now move. Oh, come on, things to get a little see. So now you can see that uh, our slide now comes with the root node, but because it has no scripted uh, parent child relationship, we can move it freely against whatever node it's uh, been assigned to. <coughs> now, of course, we need to add that that uh, weapon slide. Actually, what I like to do is because adding bones can introduce influences based on their envelopes, is to put it way out here, simply select the character model, once again, do an add. Hello, where are you? There you are. Okay, we'll do an add, and we'll add our slide to our to our uh, scanning solution here now to get things back uh, get things back into where it's supposed to be I can now move this directly without uh, affecting the uh, the weapons model <coughs> based on the tendency to introduce the influence envelopes throughout the entire model now what they tee -tee -tee -tee. now we have to start doing something a little bit more in the way of uh, of being able to control this model since this model is is one single unified model we obviously need to bind the slide to this to this object. So we'll just uh, add on. Uh, we'll do an auto key. We'll move this uh, say up uh, to 50. That's always a good high number. It creates a smooth uh, transition between points. To make sure that we got everything, and then we can move that object. And then as we move it back and forth, we have a slide. Okay. So now we just select our, our weapon again here. Go to our rollout. Uh, select the skinning solution and edit envelopes. And what we want to make sure we select uh, as our link, we select slide. As you can see, we have absolutely no influence, but we have some some ob uh, uh, objects or <coughs> some points in here that we would not want to assign to that link in particular. So we're going to select based on verse on vertices points here. Now there is a feature within uh, the rollout here. Now hmm, I'm going to probably fumble around to find it because usually I like to have uh, my Windows. Uh, Rollout windows spread out across there, so I can quickly select various uh, elements. Uh, but there is a feature in here that hopefully I won't be spending too much time trying to locate it. Mm, do, 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 do. Oops, actually, I think it's higher up as part of the selection. It's part of the selection uh, window here. Select element. There we go. If we select element now, <coughs> you know, each of each of these elements within this model is obviously separate from the main frame, as in how they operate practically. The slide obviously ha cannot be welded to the uh, the main frame there. So if I go select by element, I select all of the points that are connected and part of this single single object as part of that underlying element. Now. If I slide this up over here, you can see now that our waiting solution has moved over. So what we can do now is we can go down into our rollout here and select our absolute value to 100%. And of course, the model doesn't come along with it. So what we need to do is reset that back to its its uh, origin. Select always to form. Turn that, see as, as you can see, I, I turned always to form on zero frame off which resets the model, and then if I set it back to always redeform, then our element comes along with it. Now, this this stage, we can now see that obviously, you know, we're missing a few elements that should have been gone along with this model. 
So we're going to go back into our model here, and we're going to start to have to divide and conquer the different element pieces, element, the pieces of this model based on the element level. So since the element is still turned on, we have our our our, our animated uh, slide over to the over to the far left. We can then just go over and set absolute zero, our absolute reference, to 100%, and everything goes swoop, scoots along over to it. And at the same time, we can obviously see that, uh, okay, there's a few other little goodies that has to go along with this slide here, as an example, the front aiming point. So we can slide that over too as well. And they're, they're you know, happy as can be all <coughs> connected to that one, one single control point. Now, you can see now we definitely do have a proper sliding action as it relates to this weapon here. Now, this is just, this is basically the same thing for anything else that we want to to include as part of of the animation the animated function of a given weapon so if, if a weapon has a hammer uh, then we can create another control object to control that if it's this here for example let me demonst quickly demonstrate that probably in the roughest uh, of roughest ways we exit uh, we exit the skin modifier we're going to grab this uh, this uh, tag flash here as a donor because it's already uh, centered to our screen here. And we're going to rotate it based on its local axis. Well, you know, it may be a good idea to rotate it at its local axis. So it's at an angle pretty darn close to how the magazine should be. Now, that once again, this is one of those things that you're going to have to kind of tweak and work with to get it to go up and down properly. You're not going to get any of this, uh, any type of control, form of control, uh, first time out of the box. I mean, you know, you start getting into things like player models, it takes weeks to actually dial things in, and even then you're not really done. But anyways, since this is the simplicity of a weapons model, you know, we can, it's, everything's a little bit, bit more visual in front of us. Oops. Um, obviously we want to change this here. We don't need it as a tag, we could call it a mag. Know, magazine or some people might want to foolishly call it a clip which uh, of course there is a price to pay for calling it that <laughs> so anyways we have our our, our, our key uh, control point set up once again uh, just to make things easier to find that go wrong of course we're going to grab that in our local transition because we want it to actually have kind of that angle when we animate it we hit the uh, the auto key button down she goes, you know, be a little bit, uh, exaggerate the, uh, exaggerate it a little bit so we make sure that it indeed all comes down to this point here. <clears throat> Selecting the model, we then go once again, the same procedure that we did with the slide, we simply set, uh, set our selection to do, 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 select by element, which gives us all the points within that uh, selection there, and then we can then go to absolute value, give it 100%. Off she goes off to the side. Whoopsie! But we know how to fix that because we can always go to always deform, turn that back on. Actually, uh, not a good idea because we will need to go to zero point, always deform, then back on again, and then it should. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> okay. <coughs> As you notice, I've uh, assigned that to the wrong control point. So sometimes making a mistake is a good way of demonstrating ways to being able to fix it. So we look at our list here. Obviously, I did not, I, I forgot a step here of adding our magazine into the skinning solution. And once again, it's off to, off to some point. So it's influence, should not influence, it should not influence any geometry here uh, whatsoever. So once, once again, we just, basically go back to what we've already demonstrated. We go slide and the absolute value of the absolute effect up to 100% and we have our mag animated. <coughs> now how this, uh, how this weapon will be animated as, as part of either the first person or the third person uh, pers uh, perspective. Um, uh, well, the first person is going to be a little bit more difficult to explain. We'll leave that for probably another how-to kind of video. But uh, for animating this as uh, as a weapons model for the third person, since the third person model is going to to be represented by an animated model, as well as the animation of actually how this weapon will function will be tied into the first person. In other words, the you know the action is 
the action of the weapon is independent from how the how the first person hands are going to operate. So it can it, it can you can basically hand key this to create the kind of animation that is required for any, any given uh, uh, action, which is of course the most predominant one is fi actually firing the weapon. Now, <clears throat> okay, so this gets tricky because uh, you got to it's a it's more of a timing issue. So if we set uh, if we set the auto key and we go up bump up one key keyframe here, we can slide this to its full eject position. We can move it another key frame forward, take this key down here, animate it over, or copy it over. Oops, actually that didn't copy over, did it? Okay, let's try that again. Okay, we can copy that key over. Oops, I'm pressing the wrong key here. Okay, let's try this one more time. Select and copy, there we go. So you can see that the breach opens, breach closes. And then we might want to add uh, a slight delay in between. You know, just use just using everyday ordinary uh, animation techniques, nothing special. And you can see that the breach opens, breach closes. That's it. <coughs> That's our firing animation, uh, except for the fact that, of course, we've missed something here, and that is the trigger. So I'm going to set my set up my snaps here to uh, actually I already have it have it set up for angle snap, so I can. S s Zip this over to a 90 degree angle. Go OK. Move and down. And you can see it's it's lined up. It's not important because this is going to be a rotation controller. But as noted as a trick to the trade, move your control point away from the object on which it's going to be bound to. We go to our our skinning solution here. We go to our rollout, and we do an add. Oops, obviously, yeah, Glock trigger. How did I get named Glock trigger? Oh, okay, because uh, it's actually, because actually my Glock is called Glock trigger. <laughs> okay, let's fix that. Well, we just that's that's a Glock, not a Glock trigger. Okay, <coughs> this is a Glock trigger. G O C K T R I G. Of course, it does not have to be designated as a tag because its keyframing is independent from the hard-coded so uh, coded requirements. We select our weapon here again. We do an add. We do a Glock trigger selection here. Select that. Add that in as a, a control object. Move that back. And of course, now we select. Go to our rollout. Select. This time, we're going to select, make sure that we have a trigger selection. You can see that uh, obviously we are, uh, we have a zero influence off of off of everything else in the scene here. But with uh, with our selection here set to element, um, you know, instead of adding the animation to it, I'm just going to go ahead and roll the dice and give it an absolute value. Oops, uh, I'm playing with the wrong dial. I'm going to give it an absolute effect value of 100%. And boom, you can see, okay, weird things, but we know how to fix that. Where are we put things on zero frame here? Whoops. Uh, okay, the evils are the evils that is of moving things with with your auto key select turned on. So we created generated some keyframes there, so we go select those, get rid of them, so things they don't move around. <coughs> now we can go back to fixing this here. We go envelopes. We all we already have our selection selection made, so we're going to give it this an absolute value of 100%, which we already did. Uh, but we need to fix the always deform. We do it on zero frame. Turn it back on. Now, when we turn off our skinning solution, select our control object and do our rotate, and there you go. You can see we can rotate the trigger. <coughs> So more or less, that is the entire weapon rigged up, ready to go into the video game. <coughs> Be it an animated first-person model or an animated third-person model, and uh, it's really that simple. And, and it's more or less the same procedure for all the other models. There are a couple of different types of tags that are predefined within the engine. Now I don't want to show them all at this time because uh, more or less, this is all you need to get. To, to get started, you have your to just to kind of run over again. You have your tag flash, which is also the central point for the 
for the silencer. We have a tag laser, which obviously if this weapon has one, will be connected at this at this point here based on its local axis. We have a tag weapon, which connects this weapon to where it needs to be stored within the model itself or in the hand in any particular given hand position. The rest are, are control nodes, which are animation dependent. It means that as long as the animation that is created that that is used to create this will automatically be loaded in and assigned to these control points. So we have Oh, by the way, I forgot tag eject, which of course is the direction that the shell will be directed in. Back to our control points here. Obviously, this is our, you know, this is our our tr our trigger that we selected here, uh, which doesn't is not a tag. And then we have a slide here, which is just uh, once again a normal control point, not a tag. And we have a mag uh, a control point, which once again is not. A tag, it's just a simply control point that just has to match up with the animation. Okay, uh, probably trying to go a little too oversimplified on the explanation, but it really is that simple and the, and the, and the rest uh, of the uh, rest of the uh, weapons models are more or less are more or less built and animated and based on this the simplicity of, of just a general a, a general skin and rig type solution. Okay, that should do it for how to. <laughs> Actually, this was, should have been a lot shorter than this, but hey, more too much information is better than not enough.